don't feel guilty because someone's telling you, no, 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 you should never do that. I told you so. Like, we don't need the condescending parent that nobody wants around, right? We don't need the condescending Aunt Susie that comes in. You're a dumb ass, and let me tell you why. And I knew everything, and if you would have listened to me, thanks a lot, Susie. You're not alone. Job losses and unemployment are at historic highs. So smart financial advice from Susie Orman is in high demand. Yeah, she's the host of Susie Orman's Women and Money podcast. And we're so lucky to have her here answering questions from her home in the Bahamas. Susie, it's so good to see you. Hi, Susie. Girlfriends. Girlfriend. Hi, everybody. Susie, it's good to see you, It's too. great to see you. Um, there are so many people, Susie, who are going through probably the worst time in their lives. We have 40-plus million people out of work. If you were giving them initial advice in this... I just need to point out, like the way that the news works is people are going through the worst time of their lives is a pretty big judgment um, that's kind of this blanket statement that I think kind of creates fear. And I don't know that it's always true. For some people that might be true, but maybe not for everyone. Maybe this is a reset for someone to reimagine, rethink and recreate what their career is going to be and what type of job they were doing. How many people are out there right now trading time for money, doing something that they hate so they could buy the things that they love and never have the time to do the things that they love because they're too busy working doing the things that they hate. And so maybe this is a time to say, what do you really want? So that's, that's just the first thing that really gave me pause I wanted to mention. Moment, Susie, what would you say to people who feel just desperation in this moment? Yeah, you know, the truth of the matter is, you guys, when I was doing your show back in February, we gave them really good advice, which is, especially if you're invested in the markets, for instance, with your 401ks, just hold tight. So that's one group of people. Okay, just holding tight in a 401k doesn't solve an issue of someone's out of work. That's the, that's the whole premise here. Someone's out of work. Just hold tight. Like, if 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 it's February and there could be some major things coming up and turmoil, wouldn't building liquidity? Wouldn't be refining your skills? Wouldn't investing in yourself? Wouldn't be looking for other options and opportunities? Holding tight to your 401k does nothing this year for you. And yet that's what's being told because of one day, someday, you can finally do the things that you enjoy. If you just save enough money, and you don't touch it and you leave it alone. It just doesn't add up. There's another group of people, Hoda, where really they're dependent on the stimulus check. They're dependent on unemployment. They don't think they're going to get their job back. Here's the thing, everybody. You just have to save every single penny you possibly can right now. OK, so you don't have a job. And the advice is to save every penny you possibly can. Like, this is insulting to me. Like, that is not good advice. The advice is it, it's time to dive in and figure out who you really are, what you're capable of, what your most important skill sets are, find ways that you can add more value. Because right now, she's telling you to get in scarcity and scrimp and save and, and hold on and hold tight. Like, again, we started the premise with people have lost their jobs. What should they do? Like, this. Job interview skills might be good, knowing where to find work, knowing how to start a business, finding, like I have clients right now that are doing extraordinarily well. They had to reinvent how their business worked, but it's amazing to see the growth because they decided to say, it's a new economy. How can we help? How do we support? How do we add value? How do we solve problems? This is creating a very inward, only selfish looking at ourselves type of situation already. You need to stay strong. You need to keep calling your creditors and say, I know that you gave me three months where I didn't have to pay. I need another three months. Mm -hmm. And you just have to. That's fine to, to be in communication proactively with creditors. I'll take that advice. But when she says you have to stay strong, that's a pretty weak statement. And it's said to be, say strong, so it seems like an oxymoron. Be this ferocious warrior now, where you don't turn your back on this battlefield of the unknown. So, but the main advice is, I hope we've all learned. What if life wasn't a fight? What if we didn't have to be ferocious warriors, but we just became value creators? What if we started to believe in some of the gifts and the things that we had in this world and started to develop them? What if we started to look at the major problems in the world and said, how could I contribute or where could I solve um, something? And, and we started to really 
you know, have some faith in our, our skill sets and our gifts because I think that during these times we get into desperate desperation. We just take whatever happens to be there. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know if we want to look at everything as a war and a fight because that elicits fear and anger. And what if instead we looked at people as valuable and just started to have conversations with them and say, I'm struggling right now. I don't know what to do. Um, who do you know? How could I help? What could I, you know, what could I learn? Like there's, there's new questions for this type of world learned that an eight-month emergency fund is the most important part of any financial I agree with her but again it's insulting to say hey an eight-month emergency fund is essential we're saying we're in the emergency for some of these people so telling them you should have done this before or you need to start doing this without a job is BS Susie let's raise the intellect and the value here. foundation this is the time to save 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 put everything else on hold when everything else comes back, because it'll come back sooner than later here. Don't put investing in yourself on hold. Don't put reading and gaining you know, skills. And I'm talking about the skills like emotional intelligence and communication and like figuring out what you're really gifted at and really honing that in. I've really taken that time during this. I mean, I do a lot of speaking for a living. And I haven't done any speaking in 2020 other than virtual speaking on Zoom and those kind of things, but not at the big conferences. And so, you know, I, I could be really upset about that. But what I did was I took the time to refine my skills, to write a new keynote that's a one man show, to be performing and working on it every day with this extra time, to spend some time with my family that I wouldn't have spent because I would have been on the road and did a family retreat this last weekend that we really got bonded and connected and said we can support each other. We can talk about our fears and, and what we're struggling with and know that it's okay that we've got each other's backs rather than feeling isolated and just feel like we've got to bear down and be strong like Susie says, reach out, collaborate, connect. That's what the world needs right now. And just make sure you have that foundation of that fund. So Susie, we saw people who were making a decent income, people that had steady jobs, lose their jobs. And then they were one of the cars that were trying just to feed their kids, lining up at food banks. Mm -hmm. And that too, I think is the hardest part for people. What is the lesson mm -hmm. here? I mean, obviously saving, but what else? Here's well, here's one lesson here is if, you know, if you're in a good situation, we can all lend a helping hand, we could support other people, we, our firms decided to hire during this time and uh, provide opportunity because in these types of times, people need more people to talk to and lean on and understand what's going on and, and discuss. And we created, you know, more free resources for people to be able to tap into. And we, you know, gave them uh, extra webinars and, and things that to help them navigate all of this kind of stuff. And I was like, this is part of paying it forward. This is part of being in a community. This is part of supporting each other. That, that you know, those people that are doing well can help others do well too. It is about reaching out and supporting. Every piece of advice so far is about isolation. Isolation is a very dangerous, scary game, especially if you feel like you've lost something and you get into scarcity. Scarcity is a great destroyer of wealth because in scarcity, we buy into fear, doubt, and worry. We sit there, we don't quite know what to do. And then all of a sudden we start to lose faith in, in our own value and what we can contribute. And then, you know, we, that leads to inaction and then just hopelessness. We've got to provide connection and hope here. It's the thing, Jenna, when people who make a good living are then standing in a food line. What does that tell you? It tells you money came in and money. By the way, uh, it says money matters. Susie Orman answers your financial questions. I have yet to hear a question answered, so I just find it ironic. By the way, we'll it went keep out. Going. Just because they had a paycheck at one point, they felt like, oh, I can get a new car. I can get a bigger house. I can buy. You know, she makes an amazing point here. I'll give it to her right here. This is, yeah, we, we've been trained in consumerism. We've been trained to rent happiness. We have whatever we're doing, and we're like, if I just go buy this thing, it'll make me feel better. But that just is a temporary feel better. It's like a hit of dopamine that goes away. And so we're being trained by corporations to be in a consumeristic society. The more we buy, the happier we'll be. The more we have, the more respected we'll be, the more loved we'll be. And so that consumer, consumeristic condition is decimating people. And if they didn't have their foundations because of it, this is the time to learn. In 2008, I, I definitely was arrogant. I definitely thought everything I touch turns to gold. So I'm like Midas. And you know what? I had the Midas touch kick me right in the ass is what happened because I didn't think about all of the foundational principles that she's kind of saying after the fact. Like, 
I like eight months of liquidity, you know, built up for personal expenses. Part of what you could do right now, let me give some real advice. You could refinance if you have um, someone with good credit um, or if you have a job. If you don't have a job, it might be really hard to refinance or renegotiate interest rates, right? That might be very complicated. You can now get up to $100,000 out of your retirement plan to help bridge the gap. But as you've been going through this, look and say, what was I buying that wasn't really serving me or didn't have a lasting impact or I didn't really enjoy? and maybe it's time to recalibrate what's most important in your life and find out where that true happiness comes from. And I think a career that's meaningful, that you enjoy, that you want to be part of, it might be more difficult to find right now, but this might have been the kickstart to start looking at that. So she's starting to give some good piece of advice. Those new electronic gadgets, I can take a vacation. If you could turn back the hands of time, do you wish that you hadn't taken that vacation that you had to put on your credit cards? Right. So just because you can afford something, I have a problem with don't take a vacation being the advice and then keep all your money in retirement plan. So what are you doing? You're waiting for one day, someday? Well, guess what? That's never today. And what we're not guaranteed uh, a, a life to life expectancy and we can never buy back memories and never have. So I'm, I have a, I take issue with vacation. Now, some of those might be staycations. We, we usually, you know, travel abroad. We haven't done that this year, but we've gone to our cabin and just really enjoyed it. And you know what? Back when uh, when we didn't have one, we were fine when people offered, hey, would you like to go stay here? A lot of people are just they don't want to say yes to that because they feel like, oh, I don't you know, you don't really mean it. And they don't they're not really good at receiving. If you can receive during these tough times when people want to give you support, it is going to help you out. You don't have to do this alone. Because you have money coming in doesn't mean that money should go out. Until yeah, I reiterate, the lesson learned here is that the eight-month emergency fund is so incredible because all the people now writing me. I just feel frustrated. Like, yes, learn this lesson, but how is this answering your financial questions? She said over and over, eight, month, eight months of uh, savings set aside. Yes, if you lost your job, Susie, you're being an a-hole by saying that. It's absolutely offensive. Yeah, stop making me feel guilty. It's like I'm a little kid that made a mistake, and then I keep getting beat because of the mistake for weeks later and then months later, and I'm just going to have to feel punishment and guilt for the rest of my life. Okay, we get the point. What can someone do today? Please tell me Money that. Podcast are saying, thank God, Susie, I listened to you. Thank God I have an eight-month emergency fund. Oh, well, let's too. Oh, thank God I listened to you on your podcast, Susie, because now I'm not hurting like other people. Stop trying to get us this versus that, right versus wrong. Come together. Let's help each other out. Stop telling us you are so damn smart, Susie, as you sit in your Bahamas in house years, right now. I've been on the Today Show saying eight months, eight months, eight months, mm -hmm. and I've been begging all of you, yeah. and I think the greatest Thank you so much, right Susie, for letting us know that, that we were idiots. Is security. Yeah. I just have to say one other thing. What is the goal of money? That is day? not security. Let's be clear. Eight months of savings is breathing room. Eight months of security is stability, but it's not true security in that savings. True security is knowing who you are, understanding your abilities, your values, knowing what you're capable of to serve others and solve problems is to become a value creator. And people get stuck in survival during these times and they start to get self I don't blame them. I was there in 2008 for a while. I'm just trying to make it through. But the reality is we've got to start thinking about others and what we can do to support and, and give and create value. And especially when you do that in exchange for money so that you can provide the livelihood for your family is a noble and just cause. The goal of money isn't to buy a fancy car or a fancy this, a fancy that. It's so you can... Well, there is value-based spending. Like, there's things, there's some people like, I don't love fancy cars. I have a truck now, and it's just, I've, I've loved it for two years, and I, I just want to keep driving it for as long as it'll drive. I love it. That's value-based spending. Saying a fancy car, I want to know what Susie drives. What does she drive? You know, maybe she has a lot more cash to pay for that. But there's some people that just have a passion for cars. One of my uh, business partners, Les McGuire, who died at age 35, loved his SL65 Mercedes. He drove it everywhere all the time, had the top down, just loved it. I didn't love uh, the, uh, those kind of cars, but he did. So for him, that was value-based spending. Don't feel guilty because someone's telling you, no, 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 you should never do that. I told you so. Like, we don't need the condescending parent that nobody wants around, right? We don't need the condescending Aunt Susie that comes in. You're a dumb and let me tell you why. And I knew everything. And if you would have listened to me, thanks a lot, Susie. Be secure. So what would make you look and feel and be beautiful? Security. Because mm -hmm. when you mm -hmm. feel 
you're you look powerful yeah. and nothing's more beautiful we're, than a answer powerful. a question you're please right. Susie. we're going to take viewer questions Susie, in a second but is it some jobs may not be coming back do people have to start learning like other jobs do people have to learn how to be innovative do people have to learn how to progress? Yes, this is the this dawn of human history is like we continue to find ways to be more efficient with our production. And in that efficiency, there's more opportunity and with invention. So yeah, like I come from a, a lineage of a great grandfather coal miner, grandfather's coal miner and dad coal miner. You know what, my dad's like, hey, there's more to life than that for me. And even in his 60s and looking of a higher fulfilled purpose, like it's you're never too late, you're never too young. Like people always tell me, oh, you're too young and I start a business when I was 15 and then when I started financial services oh you, you're too young and you know what? I took young and said I get advantages where people would talk to me they might not talk to someone who's older because they want to pay it forward stop letting people give you these false limited mindsets and have it dictate what you do let's see if Susie answers one question if she doesn't it's just it's time to be done here Gills? Yeah, you betcha they do. I'm sorry to say that this is also brought on that many of the major corporations have realized they can let everybody work at home. They can cut their staff. They can do all these things right now. So I would like people to look at this as an opportunity to reshape your life. What is it Finally. at this point in time, since this is the great reset in your life right now, what is it that you really want to learn? What do you really want to do? Good How advice. can you make Thank something you happen from what you feel is yes. nothing you have to have faith everybody that everything happens for the best you More than have faith, to because if you don't have that faith then you're then what do you have so again my comment be faith a warrior here you mm -hmm. have to be strong well Susie, we have viewer Susie. questions we're going to take um they'll be right after the commercial break so stick around more with Susie orman she'll take your questions coming up right after this we're back with women and money podcast host Susie orman one of our favorites and our virtual audience. So let's get right to the questions. The first question is from Carrie about paying off her mortgage. Hey, Carrie. Good morning. She's gonna say to pay Hi. off your mortgage, Carrie. Hi. Let me spoil the surprise. What's your question? Susie, I'm single, I'm 50 years old. I would have an eight month emergency fund after I pay off my mortgage. But I'm concerned in this time of COVID-19, the uncertainty in the market, the uncertainty in the job market, is that still the best thing for me to do to pay off my mortgage and have that eight month security fund? The very yeah. first thing I want you to do is while you still have a job, because you never know, take out a home equity line of credit, just Good so advice. you have it in case of an I emergency. Like then job, I want you to pay off your mortgage. Then the money that you are paying towards your mortgage every month, I want well, you to put that exact. Okay, we have a little bit of an issue here. Um, home equity lines of credit in times like this aren't guaranteed that they're going to keep them open and give them the full amount. So if she pays this off, great, she no longer has that payment, but she's concerned about longevity of like what happens to her income in these types of times. Paying that off and not having that cash could create more concern. That concern can move her into scarcity and be detrimental. So I like the line of credit idea. I'm not against someone paying off their mortgage. I have a cabin that's paid off. I'm really considering paying off my home. I've got the cash to do it. But at the same time, there's a lot of opportunities that are coming up. So I understand, you know, you got to kind of measure peace of mind versus what makes economic sense. If you're paying 3% on your mortgage and you can earn 4% in cash flow banking, well, maybe, maybe not paying off your mortgage and building up your cash and then just paying it off when there's enough cash makes more sense. It really depends on options. And she's starting to limit her options here. I, I knew she would say pay off the mortgage, and of course she did, but just something to think about. Same amount of money back into your savings. If something uh -huh. happens, you can access the home equity line of credit, and it would be the same thing as if you had a mortgage, really. It so, might not be the same thing because a lot of home equity lines of credits are variable rates, and right now interest rates are so low, and you could lock them in on an actual mortgage. Or home equity line of credit, you may have a variable rate, and again, they might lower the amount that's available to you depending on what happens in the future with defaults or with you know changes in, in lending requirements. And we saw a lot of that in 2008 to 2010 and 2000 to 2002. All right, there's no reason to, to listen much more. If you've heard Susie for 10 minutes, you've heard her for 10 hours. It's, it's pretty much the same advice, so uh, no reason to keep going with that overall. Um, at least she was answering some questions and not just bragging about how smart she was telling you a long time ago that you need to save all this money for the last eight years. Like, yeah, I've been saying the same thing, but that doesn't really help people right now unless they did it. We have to really help people. So here's the deal. Find 
out what your biggest skill sets are, invest in it, find ways to expose that to the world through value creation, serving others and solving problems. Um, really take this time to invest in yourself and that doesn't require money all the time. That could be simply getting up and taking time to meditate, um, to share gratitude, um, focus on a skill set, read a book, listen to a podcast, like find out what is it you want, write out your vision for your life. There's so many things that you could do at this time. And, uh, but more than anything, reach out to people. Let them know if you're suffering, if you're in pain. It's not about judgment and being vulnerable it can allow you to really connect and get solutions because when you're deep in the pain, I have a hard time coming up with a solution when that's me, but some outside perspective can ask me questions I don't ask of myself and get further along. All right, you now know how to turn your thoughts into profits and build the life you love. Turn Susie off and turn your life on. Want to master your money? Want to figure out the things that you could do to improve your finances? Click here and check out more videos like this on Money Matters.